Hi guys, with the Clipper fans growing by the minute and the shortage of Raspberry Pi boards all around the world still persisting, users are trying to find different solutions. There has been some 3D printing manufacturers that are aware of this and are making alternative solutions for the Raspberry Pi boards. In this video, we will check another solution by Big Tree Tech. It's the Big Tree Tech Pi version 1.2. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, here we have the Big Tree Tech Pi version 1.2. With it, we can have Clipper installed and control our 3D printer, the same way if you were using a traditional Raspberry Pi but with some extras. Although this board was designed for Clipper use, we can do a few more things with it. But first, let's see what we get when we order one of these boards. Inside the box, we have the traditional yellow duck. A heatsink, a cable, a small Wi-Fi antenna, the board, a small card, and finally a small sticker. And this is the board. It has the same size as a Raspberry Pi board, and even the mounting hole locations are the same. It's equipped with an all-winner H616 quad-core Cortex-A53 running at 1.5 GHz and 1 GB DDR3L internal memory. Right off the bat, we can see four USB 2.0 connectors and an Ether connector here at the front. We can connect a keyboard, mouse, webcam or any other here on the USB ports. At the back, we can see the small Wi-Fi module. The antenna needs to be connected here. At this side is the GPIO header pins. The header has different colors so it can be easy to identify the pins. The yellow ones are 3.3 volts, the red ones are 5 volts, the black ones are ground pins and the green ones are I.O. pins. For power, this board has a couple of different voltage input options. It's possible to use any 5 volts and 2 amp power supply, like this one for example, and connect it here on this USB Type-C connector. If you don't want to add a power supply and power the board directly from the printer, it's possible to connect 12 or 24 volts directly on this screw type connector instead. For display output options, this board is equipped with an HDMI output here and an SPI output here. It also includes a dedicated connector for the ADXL345 accelerometer sensor right here. The cable that came with the board is to connect this sensor. Here at the side, we have a CAN connector. If we have a USB to CAN module, it can be connected directly on the board on these two connectors. There's also a 3.5mm jack for audio here, and an infrared receiver here at the corner. Finally, there's one more connector here, and it's a 5 volt output for a cooling fan. For now, we will just attach the heat sink. If it gets too hot, we will need to add a cooling fan. Unlike the Raspberry Pi boards, this one does not have Bluetooth. Since the board didn't came with a memory card and operating system, we first need to get a microSD card and install the operating system. On Big Tree Tech's GitHub page, we can find a ready-to-use image for this board. So, Start by downloading the image file to your computer and also download a software to install the image to the memory card. 
you can use Bolina Etcher, for example, and this one is free to use. Once downloaded and installed, open Bolina, select the image file and the micro SD card that you will use for the operating system, then go ahead and start the writing process by clicking the flash button. Once done, don't install the memory card on the Pi board yet. With the memory card on your computer, you should now see a new partition called boot. Inside, you will see several files. Locate the system.config file and open it with Notepad++. We need to edit this file if we want the board connected to our Wi-Fi network. In there, you will see the Wi-Fi SSID and password lines that we need to edit with our own. Enter your Wi-Fi network name and password, save the file, and that's it. You can now remove the memory card from your computer and insert it on the board's card slot. We can then check if everything is running by connecting the power to the board and also a display if you have one. For this test, we will use the HDMI 7 from Big Tree Tech. The HDMI 7 display is inside this enclosure that we designed and printed to protect the display. The HDMI cable is connected here with this adapter cable. And for power, we can use one of the USB ports. To power the board, we will use one of these small 5V and 3 amps power supply. If you want to use the USB Type-C connector for power, you need to keep this jumper plugged in. If you prefer to connect the 12 volts or 24 volts on the screw type connector instead, you need to remove the jumper out. The boot config file is set up by default to automatically detect and adjust the HDMI image size, according to the display that is connected. The first time it loads the operating system, it's normal to take longer to start up. Ok, the operating system was loaded. On the display, we have image and we can see the information that is missing the printer's config file. This is normal because we are not finished with the installation. We need to connect the Pi board to the printer and install the Clippers firmware on it and also create the printer's config file and store it on the Pi's memory card. To access the board, we can use the free software PuTTY. On the display, we can check which is the board's IP address and use it to access the board. The user and password are BQ. From here, we can enter the clip folder and enter the command make menu config to select the appropriate settings for our printer. These settings can be different from printer to printer, so you need to check the correct setup for your model. Once that is done, Type Q to exit and Y to save. Then enter make to compile the firmware for the printer. With the firmware compiled, you can either flash it directly to the printer or copy the file to the printer's memory card and flash it from there. The firmware can be found inside the home, Pi, Clipper and Out folder. And with the name clipper.bin or .x. Once that is done, create the printer config file for your specific printer and copy it to the Pi's board inside the printer data and config, and you will be ready to go. If you don't know how to make a config file, you can check Clipper's config files on GitHub and see if they have one for your printer. If we enter the IP address on any internet browser, we can access Clipper. As you can see, the printer config file error is also displayed here. You can also find the example config files if you go to the machine menu and under config examples. If you find a config file that matches your setup, you can download it from here to your computer. Next, enter the config folder and import that file in here. One last step is to edit this file and modify this line with the name of your printer config file. Restart Clipper and it should be ready to run. These last steps take some amount of time to explain in more detail, so the complete Clipper installation tutorial is a subject for a different video. 
Anyway, we hope that this initial information will help you to go the right path with the Big Tree Tax Pi board. And that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye.